In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the number of paired and unpaired electrons. So we're going to start with the element fluorine, which has an atomic number of 9. How can we determine how many paired and unpaired electrons fluorine has? The first thing we need to do is to write the electron configuration. So I'm going to create a chart that is going to be helpful in this instance. Now what you need to know is that the S sublevel can hold a maximum of two electrons, P can hold up to six, D can hold up to 10, F can hold up to 14. Now we need to write the electron configuration in such a way that the exponents add up to nine. So we're gonna start with one S. So we're gonna write one S two because the S level can hold a maximum of two electrons. After that is two S, so that's going to be 2s2, and then after the 2s sublevel comes the 2p sublevel, which can hold up to 6. But we don't need 6, we need to stop at 5, because 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9. So now what we need to do is write the orbital diagram. S has one orbital, p has three orbitals. So now we need to fill up the orbital diagram. And it's important to understand that each orbital can hold up to two electrons. Now based on the off-bar principle, we need to fill up the lower energy levels first. Now once we get to the 2p sublevel, there's three orbitals with the same energy. So they're degenerate orbitals. When you're adding electrons in degenerate orbitals, according to Hund's rule, you need to add the electrons one at a time with parallel spins, and then you could pair it up afterward. So this gives us a total of nine electrons. So based on this picture, how many paired and unpaired electrons does fluorine have? So as we can see, fluorine has one unpaired electron. So I'm going to write UP for unpaired. Now, it has two, four, six, eight paired electrons. So this adds up to 9. And so that's how you could determine how many paired and unpaired electrons are in a particular substance. Now let's try another example. Phosphorus, which has an atomic number of 15. Feel free to pause the video and determine how many paired and unpaired electrons are in this element. So go ahead, take a minute, and try this problem. For the element phosphorus, I don't need to go past 3D. And keep in mind, S can hold 2 electrons, P can hold 6, D can hold 10. So we're going to start with the 1S level. So we have 1S2. And then next is the 2S level. So 2S2. And then it's going to be 2P, then 3S. P can hold up to 6. So right now, we have a total of 10 electrons. Our goal is to get up to 15. So after 2p6, it's 3s2. So now we have a total of 12. Thus now we can move on to the 3p sublevel. So we need to stop at 3p3 because all of the exponents will add up to 12. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So that is the electron configuration for the element phosphorus. Now, we need to draw the orbital diagram. So we have our 1s level, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p. So we're going to fill up the lower energy levels first. And then in the last 3p sublevel, there's only three electrons. Now, based on this orbital diagram, how many unpaired electrons? does the element phosphorus contain? So looking at the picture here, we can see that it has three unpaired electrons. Now the rest, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, those are paired electrons. And so this should always add up to 15, which it does, three plus 12 is 15. 
The other way to get this answer is just do 15 minus 3, and you'll get the number of paired electrons. Now, here's another question for you. Phosphorus, is this a paramagnetic element or a diamagnetic element? What would you say? Now, because we have three unpaired electrons, the substance is paramagnetic. Paramagnetic elements contain unpaired electrons. Diamagnetic elements contain only paired electrons. So what does it mean that this substance is paramagnetic? A paramagnetic substance is one that is weakly attracted to an external magnetic field. A diamagnetic substance is weakly repelled by an external magnetic field. Now for the sake of practice, let's work on one more example. One that's a little bit longer and harder. So we're going to go with iron metal, which has an atomic number of 26. And you can find that out using the periodic table. So if you get a question that where they don't give you the atomic number, if you have the element, you could use the periodic table to find this atomic number. So if they don't give it to you, you don't need to worry about it. Now go ahead and try this problem. Pause the video and see if you can get the answer. Determine the number of paired electrons and unpaired electrons in iron metal, and then determine if the substance is paramagnetic, diamagnetic, or even something else. So let's begin. We have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. So we need to get up to 26. So we're going to start with 1s. So we have 1s2. And then after that, we have the 2s sublevel. So this is going to be 2s2. And then 2p, then 3s. p can hold up to 6 electrons. s can hold up to 2. And then after 3s, we have 3p and then 4s. So this is going to be 3p6, 4s2. So right now, this is 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20. So we need 6 more. Next up, we have the 3d sublevel. d can hold up to 10, but we're going to stop at 3d6. So this is the electron configuration of iron metal. Next, let's draw the orbital diagram. I need to conserve space here. So everything is going to be filled except the 3D sublevel. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, we have 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4, 3D5, 3D6. So looking at this picture, how many unpaired electrons are in iron metal? So notice that we have a total of four unpaired electrons. Now, how many are paired? Well, if we take the total 26 and subtract it by four, we'll get that we have 22 paired electrons. So would you describe this substance as being paramagnetic, diamagnetic, or something else? Now, this is certainly not diamagnetic because we have unpaired electrons. So you might be tempted to say paramagnetic, which elements with unpaired electrons do show paramagnetism. However, Iron is one of those special elements that is unusually attracted to a magnetic field. If you have a magnet, and if you put it next to, let's say, an iron nail, you're going to see that iron nail fly to the magnet. And so iron metal has a special term known as ferromagnetic. There's a few substances that show ferromagnetism, and these elements are strongly attracted to a magnetic field. 
In iron metal, notice that it has the symbol Fe. When you hear the word ferrous, it's associated with iron. Or if you hear the word ferric, it's also a show, excuse me, associated with iron. So iron metal is considered to be ferromagnetic. So that's the end of this video. If you like it, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to check out the links in the description section below. Thanks again for watching.